welcome back to Oliver Ray Knits. My name is Tracy and this is episode five. Today I'm going to talk about my collection of Cowichan inspired cardigans. Before I show off my garments, I would like to give a very, very brief history of the Cowichan sweater. The name Cowichan sweater is trademarked. It was trademarked by the Coast Salish people in 2009 as a result of some cultural appropriation of the designs by some other designers and companies and as a way to preserve the traditions um, for the Coast Salish people. They have a rich tradition of weaving blankets out of animal and plant fiber using the fur of their dogs and animal goat hair and other plant fibers and weaving them into blankets with very intricate designs as a way to trade and supplement their income. In the mid 1800s, with the arrival of European settlers and their sheep, the Coast Salish people learned how to knit. And from this knitting, they created these amazing, thick, waterproof sweaters that were so important in the cold, damp climate of the coastal region. The garments themselves incorporate a lot of the techniques of the Fair Isle designs that from Scotland, and they incorporate elements of stranded and intarsia knitting. I believe the traditional garments were made all in one piece, in a tube, presumably with the arms steeped and then knitted in after, all in one piece. I was looking back because I thought, well, what kind of tools would they have used? And I guess they used bits of bone and sticks, sometimes telephone wires, so they would have made do with their own, um, whatever they could make do with to use knitting needles. They didn't have our gorgeous chagu circular needles that we have now. Sylvia Olson is a writer and knitwear designer on Vancouver Island, and she married a man who... Um, was Coast Salish way back when, and her mother-in-law taught her a lot of the techniques and tradition of the couch and sweater. And she went on to write a number of books, but one of the ones that is really important um, for learning the history of the couch and sweater is called Working with Wool, A Coast Salish Legacy and the Couch and Sweater. Looking on Ravelry, there are a lot of designers that have made couch and inspired sweaters. Um, let's see, Jared Flood from Brooklyn Tweed, um, Jane Richmond created the West Coast cardigan. There is a designer called Andrea Rangel who did the Dude, which I'll talk about a little bit. And there's a lot of other designers that incorporate the, um, the elements of the couch and sweater. But it is really important to know that the Cowichan sweater itself is only produced by the Coast Salish people. You can still buy sweaters, some old ones and some new ones that are still being knitted. Um, they take a lot longer to knit. Um, the traditions have been passed a little bit from the older to the younger generations. Um, they're probably not as available as they used to be, and they probably cost a whole lot more money. <laughs> But um, uh, they are a national treasure, and I'm glad that I was able to make my sweaters, not copying the design, but definitely be inspired by the spirit and the traditions of the Coast Salish people. I'm only giving a very brief history because there's a lot of information out there. I will put some resources below that I encourage you to look at because um, there are a lot of issues with cultural appropriation in these designs and I think that there, it's important to be aware of that. So please have a look at the resources below. So without further ado, I would like to talk about my own sweaters, my own collection. So the very first sweater I will talk about is here on the mannequin. I guess I put a little bit off-centered, but this sweater, I really don't know how it came into my possession. Let's see if I can bring it over a little bit. I believe it would have been made maybe by my grandmother, maybe my mother, I'm not really sure. And it was probably made from a Mary Maxim 
kit or maybe just the pattern and we'll purchase from another source. But this pattern is still available on Mary Maxim and it features dancers. I think they're probably spray dancers. He's wearing a cute little hat and she's wearing a swingy dress and they are dancing in the back as well. So this sweater has not had the care and love that it really deserves. Shamefully, I used it as an outdoor Christmas decoration, winter decoration for a lot of years. It was on a covered porch, but it still got fairly dirty. I did wash it and unfortunately it did run the red, red dye is very bad for this, I guess, ran into the white. I'm still really happy to have this in my collection. It is a very special sweater. I am trying to take much better care of it than I did before. The zipper doesn't work. I could probably replace it, but kind of like the idea that um, it was made by family hands. It's a little piece of my own legacy. And uh, yeah, it has pockets with cute little notes. Yeah, it's a very special sweater. My second sweater is one that I've made and it is probably my very, well, my most precious garment that I have ever created. I think if there was a fire, I would probably take this sweater along with my husband and dogs and daughter, make sure that it stayed with me forever because the memories of this sweater and the time of my life when it was created and the inspiration for it is um, unrepeatable. I'll never have that time in my life again. In 2019, our family went through a lot of challenges and I was able to spend uh, a couple of segments of time in Vancouver. First was earlier in the year, most of April in 2019. I was a little bit lonely. Um, we were dealing with some things and I was kind of needing some sort of connection. So I discovered the ladies from Wet Coast Wolves. Glenda is the former owner and Kelsey was the manager at the time. And these ladies just made me feel at home for um, a short time that I was there. And indeed they hugged me when I cried and just was an amazing time. Um, I only went there a couple of times, but it felt like home. So that was the first time. And then later in the year, about November through to when COVID time started, um, I was able to attend their bi-weekly knitting groups. These knitting groups were massive. During Thursday afternoons and then Monday evenings, um, these became sacred times for me. It didn't matter what else was going on, where else I was. I needed to be at Wet Coast Wolves with my knitting friends. Sometimes there were 20, 24 people. There was people everywhere. And every time I went to a group, I was so inspired. I was comforted. I laughed. I talked. I created. I created so many things during that time. And I uh, it was just kind of magical. I don't know. It's a way I was able to escape my life for a few hours and really enjoy the company of some amazing, inspiring creators. Um, and Glenda and Kelsey, you were the drivers behind that and offered us an open space for that. And I am forever grateful. Kelsey and Glenda, uh, I think maybe 2019, earlier in the year, or maybe the previous year, hosted on Ravelry. Uh, they actually used to have a YouTube channel as well. It's no longer there. And uh, when I wasn't in Vancouver, I was able to watch them on the YouTube channel. So they became really good friends. And actually, I was able to participate in one of their episodes way back when. Um, it was really, really amazing. Anyway, they hosted a knit along. It was the uh, Cowichan inspired knit along. And they made sweaters. I think uh, Glenda made one for her husband and one for herself. I think that they had fish or whales. And then uh, Kelsey's had a wolf design, and I think hers was purple. So not quite the traditional colors, but it was amazing. So I thought I was inspired to make my own. Um, Wet Coast Wools used to sell custom woolen mills, sea fusion, uh, 
I think it was a six ply yarn and it is absolutely perfect for the Cowichan inspired sweaters. I purchased the black, the natural and the um, gray all undyed. Um, so it's natural color of the sheep's fleece and created my own. So I thought a little bit about what I wanted my cardigan to represent. It had to be something that was very personal to me, something that was very special and something that kind of, I don't know, it was just very special to me. So if you've been watching for the last few episodes, you know that there's very few things more special to me than my little Shiba Inus. So what else could I make my sweater about? So this is the back. And then the front, let's see. The designs on the front are different. So there's a little Shiba Inu face. And this is the Japanese word for dog, which is Inu. It's the symbol for that word. All of these designs I took off the internet. I Googled black and white images, and then I plugged them into a pixelating website, which creates charts for intarsia and stranded knitting or uh, cross stitch or needlework charts. I plugged them into that and then tweaked them a little bit. And then I got a piece of graph paper and actually did a chart of every square of the design. I wanted to make sure it fit within the specific space that I had. This is a pieced garment, a seamed garment. So I made the back and white and front and um, sleeves all separately and then seamed them together. And then I added the collar. I think I used the collar from the West Coast cardigan by uh, Jane Richmond. And the design of the body of the sweater is from a uh, white buffalo design um, that I purchased at West Coast Wolves. And I love this sweater. It's thick and waterproof and filled with all sorts of really wonderful emotions and memories of that time. It was a very, very challenging time, but I, Knitting still gave me just sense of, gave me a sense of peace and I filled with love and I don't know. This sweater is irreplaceable. I have had people say, oh, ah, I have a friend with a Shiba Inu. Will you make me one? No, I will never make another one. Well, I'll never make another Shiba sweater, but I did make a second adult sized sweater. My husband is a sports fan with a capital S. <laughs> His number one game is hockey. He did play hockey as a youth. And his number one team is the Calgary Flames. We have season tickets and occasionally I accompany him to the games. I'm not such a sports fan, but live games are really something very different from watching them on TV. I get really... <laughs> I really enjoy watching people. I watch people more than I watch the game. I'm constantly missing goals because I'm, you know, trying to watch people interacting a few rows ahead of me and uh, I have fun. He will not let me bring my knitting with me, which is very sad, but I guess understandable. So instead of bringing knitting, I decided to bring a knitwear garment and this is my Calgary Flame sweater. It's kind of giant. It's pretty long, but it's got the Calgary Flames emblem on the back, their logo, the big flaming sea. And I kind of love it. It's not perfect. I think I am going to make a few changes to it, but I wanted to show it today. I did the same technique that I used for my uh, Shiba Inu sweater, where I took a uh, logo that I found on the internet, plugged it into some pixelating software and created the design. I had to do a little bit of tweaking to make it fit within the um, number of stitches that I had, but I think it worked out fairly well. 
I used a little bit of stranding and some intarsia technique. Uh, it is also a pieced seam dar garment. I added the sleeves. I did the button bands and I, I don't know what I was thinking. I got a little bit carried away by the buttonholes. I put nine of them. That's nine, nine buttonholes. I needed nine buttons for them. And when I have it all buttoned together, I just think it is too many buttons. Now I could leave the buttons off, but then I have buttonholes with no buttons to go in them. So what I am thinking of doing, because I'm also not a huge fan of this pointy, but <laughs> makes me look like a cone head. Um, I think I might take off the hood and the button band, re-knit them both, make a shawl collar instead of the hood, and uh, use these buttons, maybe use five of them. I don't know. Nine is just too many. It's a huge row of buttons. They are beautiful buttons though. They're leather and they actually uh, cost half as much as a sweater that I think are perfect for this design. This yarn I ordered from True North Yarn. I think they're a yarn store located in Ontario somewhere. And the yarn is the Briggs and Little Country Roving, which worked really well. I originally tried to make this sweater out of Rowan's Big Wool, and it was just too much of a kind of floppy garment. It was just didn't have the, the texture and the um, structure that the country roving provides. So that is my uh, Calgary Flame sweater. I was able to wear it um, to one game, and uh, they did win that game, and they haven't won since, so I'm either... Uh, good luck and I need to go more often or I should never wear this sweater ever again because they have never won since and that was a few weeks ago but there you go so that is my Calgary flame sweater I'm very proud of it it is fun to wear and it was very very warm I was warm even though we were inside the arena typically I wear my jacket the whole time because I'm cold but I was kind of wanting to take it off but I didn't anyway so that's Calgary flame sweater so my fourth sweater and the third one that I made, I just cast off, when did I cast it off? Two days ago. And it is still a bit damp because I soaked it and blocked it. This is The Little Dude. Inspired by The Dude on The Big Lebowski. This is a design by Andrew Rangel. And I knit this in some leftovers of Custom Woolen Mills two-ply yarn, um, two-ply wool. I used it for the dark, dark brown and the natural color. The gray, I, I'm not sure if it was, actually I know it wasn't. Um, it is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter leftovers I had from another project. So this is the leftover sweater. The one thing I don't like about the sweater is the collar. I was running short on the natural color, so I used Biche Bush Le Lanswell as uh, a double-stranded yarn to do the uh, button band and the collar. And I just think it's a little bit too floppy. It doesn't have the, um, the structure of the rest of the sweater. So I think when I do my quarterly check-in, for Busting My Balls 2023 in April, I might um, just buy a couple of balls of the Custom Willow Mills 2-ply just so I can remake the, the sweater collar and button band. Now, this is one of two sweaters that I am planning to make for a set of twins, my little adopted nephews, and uh, I don't know. This was a lot of knitting. This sweater took longer to knit than the Shiba Inu or the Calgary Flame sweater because it is a smaller gauge yarn and uh, smaller needles and it was just a whole lot of knitting. These arms were a little bit of a pain in the butt because I used the Chagu Minis, small circumference knitting needles and I had crampy hands. Complain, complain, complain. So I don't know if I have it in me to make a second one but it was fun and I'm glad it's done. I don't know, will a six-year-old wear a sweater like this other than for a picture? Is it worth making a second sweater just for a picture? Maybe I just take both of them and Photoshop a picture of both of them wearing it. I don't know. 
my mind. Excuse me. All right. So the dude, Jane Richmond, Brooklyn Tweed, and sorry, it is not Jane Richmond, Anger, Andrea Rangel, Brooklyn Tweed, and Custom Willow Mills to ply. So that is my four sweater, third made one. If you have been following me on Instagram for the last week, you will have seen a bunch of mini sweaters popping up in my feed. Let's see if I can find one. So, isn't it adorable? This is made with Brooklyn Tweed Shelter as well. And I just embroidered the duplicate stitch for the deer. Somebody said it looked like a centaur, which I guess it kind of does. It's supposed to be a deer. I don't know. Uh, and then some trees in the front and then some straight knitting. This was my third or fourth practice one. I was experimenting with different types of yarn. Some of them I use double stranded fingering in different types of yarn. And then this is the Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which is a uh, worsted weight. And I think it was the design that I kind of kind of like the best, the style. And then I wasn't really sure what kind of motifs to use. So I just went in and did duplicate stitch to play around with placement. So this was my final uh, test knit before I actually went ahead and did the actual sweater. So another little story. 2016, I got obsessed with a doll, a type of doll. Blythe dolls were uh, originally made in 1970s, 1972, something like that, by a company called Kenner. And they were these dolls that had kind of smaller than Barbie sized bodies and um, big heads and big eyes. And they had a little string in the back that you could use to change their eye color and the position of their eyeballs. So I'm not sure when they were really released, but 2016, my daughter went away to university and I guess I was feeling a bit lost, needing to mother something. My dogs weren't enough. I don't know. Some psychologists could probably have a field day with this, but uh, probably some sort of transference. But I got rather obsessed with blind dolls and now I probably have eight of them. <laughs> Obsessions are wonderful, aren't they? And this is my final version of my couch and inspired life cardigan. And I think it's adorable. This is using the leftovers of my sweater that I used. This is made with the leftovers of my sweater, the um, little dude, the custom woolen mills two ply. And I used a pattern from this little book. So you can see if I turn her around, you can see the little deer on the back. And I got a little bit better with the trees. Really, really easy pattern. I also made her socks, a little t-shirt, and I sewed her overalls. So she's really fun. I used this book. It's called uh, Virginia Lakens. Let's see here. It's a very old book from the 1965. The Little Sisters Doll Knitting Book. And I think this pattern actually, whatever these dolls were, um, these patterns fit the, the, is it the Skipper Dolls, Barbie's Little Sister. And there's a couple of other designs from here, a couple of other dolls. It is smaller than a Barbie, although these do have quite big heads. Um, and a really, really easy little raglan knit sweater. And I just think it is so, so, so cute. It was a bit of a challenge to find motifs that were small enough to fit in this little tiny area of knitting. But, you know, I think it's really cute. This is Holly. She is one of my custom dolls that I purchased from a maker in the United States, near Washington, D.C., I believe. And uh, just one of my collections. I'll show other dolls in the future, but she's one of my favorites. I just think she's pretty. She does have a little bit of attitude. Their eyes do change. Let's see if I can change it. Ta-da! <laughs> Creepy? Oh, cool. You decide. I don't know. I love them. So that is Holly. Anyway, that is all I have to say about Carwagen-inspired sweaters. 
ones I've made. I think I might have one more in me. I um, saw a sweater in a store in Vancouver. Vancouver has amazing thrift stores. I think there's just more people, more transient um, population, and there's always really fun things that are showing up at thrift stores. Um, this one was a particular vintage Cowichan style sweater, Christmas themed. I'll put a picture up here with it. And I think I'd like to try making it, making my own, because who doesn't need an outdoor Christmas sweater? in the Cowichan style. Uh, I am really, really, really having fun connecting with people here on the YouTube channel. I had a huge uptick of viewers and subscribers since I last posted, um, partly in thanks to my friend Leanne, who gave me a little boost on her YouTube channel. I hope that you will continue to watch and if you have made a Cowichan inspired sweater or own a Cowichan sweater or are inspired to make your own, please put a comment below or just tell me what you're working on. I am so excited to talk more about knitting. I have lots of really, really fun plans coming up um, that I'm looking forward to and can't wait to share with you. So for today, I will say goodbye and happy making. Goodbye.